So the ambassador will give a short statement. Uh, we're in a hurry, so no questions today, but thank you. Do you want to ask questions? Good afternoon. Despite all the threats in the Middle East, including the abhorrent attack in the United Arab Emirates yesterday by the Houthis, an Iranian proxy, the same Palestinians' lies are spread and hypocrisy reigns supreme. While these debates focus on the Palestinians' baseless claims, they continuously neglect the relentless acts of Palestinian terror against innocent Israelis. While the Palestinians are quick to point the finger at Israel, they fail to condemn the hundreds of Palestinian terror attacks perpetrated against Israelis in the last month alone. In fact, not only do they not condemn these attacks, they condone them. While Israelis endure Palestinian terror every single day, we hear no outcry from Palestinian leadership, but worse, we hear no outcry from the international community. When rocks such as this one are thrown at your car while your children are inside, is this not an attack of terror? Just ask the family of four-year-old Adele Beaton, who was killed by a rock just like this. Where is the world's condemnation of attacks like this? Why is this not discussed? Pure hypocrisy. But the hypocrisy continues. The Palestinian false narrative is constantly accepted by the international community. No questions asked. Sheikh Jarrah is a perfect example. The facts are clear. A family, a Palestinian family, stole public land that was earmarked for a school for children with special needs. Nevertheless, the Palestinians twist reality and use this municipal issue to promote their insightful propaganda. And rather than check the facts, the word and the Security Council immediately blames Israel. But the Palestinians and their libels are far from the only obstacle to regional stability. Iran constantly proves that wherever it extends its tentacles of terror, instability and violence ensure, ensue. Yemen, Lebanon, Syria, and the list goes on. The international community has reached a crossroads. The talks in Vienna are reaching a critical stage and immediate action must be taken. The world cannot allow Iran to continue with their nuclear advancement. If this is the effect that Iran has today on the region before nuclear capabilities, just try to imagine what the Middle East will look like if they do. But let me be clear, a nuclear Iran is not a regional problem. It is a global problem. And this Council's New Year's resolution should be to stop singling out the only vibrant democracy in the Middle East and to focus on stopping the region's greatest threats. Thank you very much. Ambassador, yeah. uh, you heard the council members, and they've said this so many times before, they've condemned settlement building and evictions, and yet these go on. Does Israel not care what the rest of the world thinks? That's my question number one. And if you may, on one other subject, Israel is a good friend of both Ukraine and Russia. There have been some reports that Israel has offered to mediate between those two parties. Can you tell us Israel's view of the current um, tension and conflict between the two? Um, I'm not going to uh, respond discussing uh, re regarding the, uh, um, the conflict between Russia and uh, Ukraine. 
Uh, I can tell you that uh, I elaborated about how much Israel is committed to improving the quality of life of the Palestinians and how we are suggesting, and personally as minister, former Minister of Environmental Protection, I uh, suggested and uh, tried to uh, promote many joint projects, uh, environmental projects, with the Palestinians. Unfortunately, uh, they always had other priorities. They always preferred to show that they boycott the State of Israel and refuse to any kind of cooperation with us. Uh, you know, the, the current uh, Minister of Environmental Protection of Israel, Tamar, Tamar Zandberg, met several months ago with her counterpart. Uh, she, again, uh, offered many kinds of cooperation, also uh, accompanied it with uh, budgets and funds, and still she is waiting for the Palestinian to uh, respond. And in regards to what you asked me about the supposed evictions, again, Israel is a low-biding country. We have a very respected and uh, responsible and independent uh, legal system. We, that's international. Our our legal system is uh, is uh, respected internationally, and our courts are, um, as I said, independent. And when there is a family or when there is a, a citizen who tries to invade or uh, you know to uh, to take for his own needs. Uh, land or uh, a house, so uh, there is always an intervention of the uh, of the legal system uh, in Israel, and again, sometimes it happens against Palestinian uh, perpetrators. Sometimes it can happen against uh, Israelis, against Jewish families, but it's always under the law, and it's always about legal independent decisions of our courts and legal system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, about the, the second part, about Iran. About Iran. 